how did people, how did bow makers in the 1600s figure out that Pernambuco was, was the one? Well, Pernambuco uh, has a, a rich, rich history within the history of Brazil, and there are also other species related to it around the world. But it was used as a dye, and it gives you beautiful, uh, this kind of red colors that basically, I, I don't know if you know this, but nobody could wear these kind of colors a long time ago. They were right. only for the wealthy and the nobility. Yeah. So it was a very important uh, aspect that was used in the, in the dye trade, especially before the invention of the aniline dye, which a synthetic dye, which happened around, oh, around 1840, 1850. After that, the Isle of Brazil, the trade of Pernambuco really ceased because there, the people didn't use those dyes anymore. Okay, they used mm -hmm. synthetics, which were much cheaper and much easier to handle. When these Pernambuco shipments were coming <coughs> over, they were being used for dyes. <coughs> Somebody found along the way that it just, it had the right sort of I resonance. Think, I think before, uh, before both, Bows in Europe were, were made of light European density woods. Uh -huh. With the quote unquote founding of the Americas, a lot of raw material went to Europe. Among them were tropical timber species. Mm -hmm. And uh, the legend goes that uh, perhaps one of the Tort family members were some of the first people to work with this wood, even though I personally think there were other people who did this before the torts, okay? Uh, but bow makers and woodworkers, whether it be bows, furniture, violins, were all always looking for a material and good materials that can be used. Mm -hmm. So by the time of this uh, early 1700s, there was a lot of use of Pernambuco in Europe for bows. If you used a different sort of uh, material, I mean, when you're a woodworker and say oak is really nice for a nice heavy desk or something like that, does, how much does that affect the sound when you have something that's really, oak is what, quite high density, right? How does that play out in the sound? Well, let's, let's, that, that's not an easy question. Let's try this. <laughs> okay. I'll try to answer it this way. There are other tropical timber species. Okay. Ipe has been tried, snake wood, ironwood, very dense woods, but they're too dense, mm -hmm. generally. Meaning that they're not only slightly heavier, but the uh, balance point of how it would react in your hand would be not good for modern playing, and how people hold the bow now. And also, the resiliency the greatest property, probably, of Pernambuco is when you deflect a weight down on it, you press down on it, mm -hmm. and how it springs back, it is one of the fastest, if not the quickest wood in the world that has been tested. And that is one of the greatnesses of Pernambuco. Okay? So you see a lot of people, they do this, or a lot of... Uh, the players will do this. But when I do this, I'm not feeling downward. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to study how it releases. And this is a very, for, for players like yourself, milliseconds makes a huge difference. Right. In articulation, also sound production. I, I realize that when I'm trying different bows, uh, sometimes it can be, sometimes it's such a pleasure and sometimes you, you get, I notice myself just getting angry, <laughs> just actually angry. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and I, um, I realize that when I'm, I'm trying on different instruments or different bows, that's actually a really good tell. It's just like, for me at any rate, it, am I getting angry or am I getting like a lot of pleasure out of playing with this, with this bow or this instrument? Mm -hmm. So I guess that's just the, the small nuances that you're feeling, just with you, this really tactile with your uh, with your fingers, just after years and years of, of playing, this, the response. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other woods that come even close to Pernambuco? I remember, and another question I had is, I remember 
walnut when I was making bowing and arrow. Yes. As a kid. Yes. That was a gold mine if you Correct. got a walnut tree. Yeah. That it, 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 the response isn't good, but walnut is, is, is it's close. But it, again, it's, it's a huge difference. Huh? So to answer your, 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 your question, I, I think that you, uh, the question, you have to define it a little bit better because there are different aspects of bows, okay? And it's not always just dollar amount, okay? That, that's a whole another subject. But the finest, I will say this, when you have the finest playing bows, finest, I will define the following. Sound quality, sound articulation, and playability. I put them in that order, okay? When you have those three things, I haven't seen anything that beats Pernambuco. For a $500 bow, you could use other woods, okay? It would work okay, but it can, that kind of wood can only carry you so far. You might have pretty good on the string at a five hundred dollar bow, but you're gonna lose you're gonna you're gonna lose something, most likely. If we compare it to the best Pernambuco, you will lose it in articulation for sure, in the handling aspect of the bow. I feel like we're just touching the surface of. <laughs> oh, I'm just, what you I mean, look, you know, I, you know, I, I, I have to tell you, I, I, I myself, I'm only just touching the surface because. Uh, Wood is such a fascinating thing. Yeah. And, and